Ugh. Hi guys, Brain the Squirrel Lion back with another video and I am joined once again by Thomas. Hello. Today we are sticking with our Halloween theme and we are going to be running through the 10 horror films that you need to see. Oh, scary. We've sat down and we've compiled a list of some great horror films. We're going to be taking it in turns to... Past and present, well, meant, meant the past. It's just of all time, really. So yeah, let's get it kicked off with our number 10. So at number 10, we have got 13 Ghosts. This film was absolutely incredible. It, it was one of the scariest films when I was younger. Like, it absolutely freaked me out. If you need to, like, see just how freaky it was, uh, I'll put a picture of the jackal, one of the ghosts over in the film. Uh, yeah, over his face. Uh, the main plot of this film is a rich man dies after being killed by a ghost that he's trying to capture. And after he's died, he leaves everything to his nephew and his family. They move into this house and... What they don't know is there's actually ghosts in the basement. The stupid lawyer ends up activating the th this thing to let all these ghosts out. So they need to survive to get out. You've got some, at least, sort of big names in the film. Oh. You've got Tony Shalob, who you may know as Monk from the series Monk. Who's also in Pain and Gain. You've got Shannon Elizabeth who plays his daughter, who you may know from the American Pie series, playing uh, Nadia. And probably the best actor in this film, you've got Matthew Lillard, who you will know from the Scooby-Doo films. Matthew Lillard is absolutely incredible in this. He plays a guy who can get visions of someone's death. He's incredible in most things he does. Oh yeah, he's incredible in a lot, but this, this is my favourite film with him in. And at number nine we have uh, Dog Soldiers, which is like less than normal. It's more of a indie werewolf film. Mm, it, is a, it is an excellent film. Like Sean Pochwe is the main character in it. Mm. It's basically where like a training exercise in the military goes wrong, and like the Scottish wilderness, like well, well, we're, we're so they start picking them off one by one, and it's it's gory. It's Oh yeah, it's incredibly gory. I mean, like, full-on guts. It's a gore fest of a film, and it is excellent. Yeah, 100% worth a watch. Well, I think it was the first werewolf film that I watched. Moving on to number eight now, we have Child's Play. Now, this film, I watched it younger than I should have. I watched it when I was still playing with toys. Like, I was a kid, I was still playing with toys and everything. And it made me anxious about my own toys. I, I, I couldn't sleep for about a week or two after <laughs> watching it for the first time. Shouldn't have watched that young Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, it's an absolutely incredible film. Like nowadays it probably doesn't seem like much. Mm -hmm. But at at the time, yeah, this this film was just it was incredible. It's literally about a little boy called Andy who wants a good guy's doll. Like, he sees the advert for the good guy's doll and it's this talking doll with its own personality and everything. While he's wanting this toy, uh, notorious killer, Charles Lee Ray, is murdered in a toy shop and he transfers his soul into the doll, into a good guy doll. Andy ends up getting the same good guy doll and it goes on a murderous rampage. Yep. Trust me, 100% watch this film. I'd watched it once when I was a kid, but then I rewatched it when I was a teenager, and I think this was the film that started me off on like my obsession with horror films. At number seven, we have got *The Green Inferno*, which is just basically a gore film, gore fest film. Uh, I've, it, I've not seen this one. So basically, the plot of this film is a group of student activists go to the rainforest to. You know, try and save the rainforest. They end up going to deep into the forest and finding, you know, like a cannibal tribe. Cannibalistic tribes, always great for a horror film. Cannibalism is one of those, it can work either really bad or really well in a film. And it does, it works really, really well in the film. Trust me, go and watch it if you like guys, that kind of stuff. It's really one of them films that you really need to go and see if. 
you like watching stuff that other people don't like to watch. Okay, here at number six, we have Ginger Snaps. Well, this is there's a series of these films. Like you've got Ginger Snaps, you got Ginger Snaps Back, and the other one's called Ginger Snaps Two. I think it's literally just called Ginger Snaps Two. But here we're going with the first one. The main plot of this film is that it's two sisters who are kind of like outcasts. They've got this weird obsession where taking pictures of each other posing dead. That's pretty weird. Yeah, it is pretty weird, but to each their own, I guess. Uh, I leave them to <laughs> They're half a day and just leave them be. But uh, the younger sister is being bullied by someone, so they decide to take like a little revenge prank sort of thing. Uh, it always has to be something to put bully in, doesn't it? And uh, while they're out trying to sort out this prank, um, the older sister ends up being bit by a werewolf. Yeah, another werewolf film here. Throughout the rest of the film, we start to see the changes in Ginger, the older sister. And you really get to see how much of a change this really causes, not only on the full moon, but towards attitude and everything. This film is absolutely incredible, and it's got two actors in it that I really enjoyed watching. We've got Catherine Isabel, who you may know as Ava from season two of Supernatural. And we've also got Emily Perkins, who you may know as Becky Rosen from Supernatural, a long lasting character who was absolutely in love with Sam. But it, this is probably the best thing I've seen them in. This was a Canadian film. And yeah, I just, I just absolutely loved it. Trust me, if you're into gore, uh, I'd suggest going and checking it out, but if you don't like watching dogs dying, uh, I suggest giving this one a miss because there is a huge thing around killing dogs in this. So at number five, I'm going to put Controversial One in, the remake of Evil Dead, which mainly focuses on the horror side of things, whereas the original focused on mainly the comedy side of things. Ooh. Taking the piss side of things, but it's still focused on horror. Whereas the remake just mainly focuses on horror. If you know like the plot from the original, like as a group of friends that go to a cabin and they find a ne necronomicon. The necronomicon. And they read it what one spell yeah. or a couple of spells. Yeah, what well, one of the friends read from one of the pages along from the book and like it just sets off a lot of weird happening. Yeah, it unleashes evil. Uh, it is a great film, like, if you've not seen the original, go and check that out before you watch a remake. Yeah, the original was great. Uh, the, the thing that separates them is this time they were able to do a lot more. Whereas with the original, they didn't even have the budget to have all of the actors in the same place at the same time. Yeah. They had to film different parts on different days with just like one or two of the actors. With this, they could do a lot more. Still turned out to be a great film. Oh right? yeah, of course it did. So I, um, I'd say if you've not seen the original, go and check that out. But if you've seen the original and you don't want to see the remake because you, you don't really like remakes of films, which is totally understandable. Still check it out. But still check check out the remake. It is uh, an amazing film. And now at number four, we have got Final Destination. This film, it's, it's just so mindfucky. It is. Like, there's no physical presence of a killer or anything. It's literally just death. That's, it's the whole psychological scare that gets you. The main plot of this film is, uh, it's students going on a field trip to Paris. But, as the flight takes off, it starts to explode. Uh, the plane just, and everyone's meant to die. But then we get like a little flash thing and we realise that the main character of the film has just seen what's about to happen. And because of him seeing it, it ends up stopping a lot of the students from actually getting on the plane. What ensues from there is death making up for the deaths that should have happened by killing them all off one by one. Uh, absolutely incredible film. Um, one of the biggest actors in this film is obviously Sean William Scott. Yeah. This was after American Pie 1, but before American Pie 2. Yeah. 
absolutely incredible the way it just plays on your mind and your own fears of just death itself rather than a serial killer or a big bad monster it's just there pretty much the main plot here is you don't cheat death yeah pretty much you do not cheat death death will come for you yeah pretty much it's but a grim outlook on life if you're meant to die you're going to die pretty much you're gonna call me cliche for this but and number three, I'm going to put Nightmare on Elm Street, I'm not. Nightmare on Elm Street, of course, this is an incredible film. Kind of did much better than Freddy Krueger. Like, it, yeah, and you can't do much better than a film that actually caused people to try not to go to sleep. Yeah. It's just one of them amazing films. I, I don't really even need to talk about the plot line because everybody knows it. Even if you've not seen the film, you still know the plot link to the film. The main plot to this really is Freddy Krueger was the janitor to a school, a child molester, pedophile and that lot. So the parents found out about it and burned them alive. So Freddy just swore revenge to get back at the children. And from that, he, he entered in the dreams and killed them whilst they're in the dreams, so they die in real life as well. I think one of the big things about this is uh, the there's that big lore of you wake up before you die in a dream. Yeah. Uh, and the main thing goes, if you die in your dream, you, die in you actually life. die in real life. So it plays on that whole thing. It's got a lot of people. Hmm. One of the big things to remember in this, and one of the things that not many people even remember from this, is this was Johnny Depp's first big film. Okay then, going off what Tom had for number three, at number two we have got Halloween. Michael Myers is still, for me, the number one slasher film. It is amazing. I think for me the best best thing about it is, in the first one he's literally just a psychopath, he's not being killed or anything. He's been in a mental asylum <laughs> after killing his sister. But when he escapes, he's looking to kill his other sister, Laurie Strode. Uh, so yeah, I, I just feel like Michael Myers is the epitome of what a slasher really is. No emotion, no remorse, just full on death. Straight serial killer. Yeah. I think he's like the only like, alive human that for a serial killer. Mm. And, and to be fair, we're, we're, we're saying we're going off plots here. I don't really think there's much of a plot for Michael. It's literally just, he killed his sister when he was younger. He grows up, escapes a mental asylum, and wants to kill his other sister. Pretty much just a psychopath. Yeah, just a full-on psychopath. So I think that's what makes this film so great. Right. And finally, at number one, da -da 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 da we have VHS 2. That was the worst film ever. <laughs> For this film, it's less that it's just full on scary and more that it's unnerving. No. It really unnerves you while watching. I remember the first time that I watched this, it was less like I was, oh, and more just full on creepy down to my skin. Yeah, pretty much. The, the first one, the first one, uh, it's a great film. Mm. But it's, it doesn't touch this one. No, the, the second, second one, one is just. Let's not talk about the third one. No. Third one. <laughs> that is terrible. The main plot to this film is that two investigators are hired by a mother to look into her son who has disappeared. Um, they go into his college dorm and they find a TV set up with loads of VHS video that tapes. Uh, the guy goes off to investigate the rest of the house while the woman sits to check out a few of these tapes. Now here's the best part about this. This is a horror anthology. This is a collection of different stories in one film. The first story that we have sees a man who has just uh, been given uh, an ocular implant. He's just being given that because uh, he had an accident where he lost one of his eyes. But the implant starts messing up and he starts seeing dead people. For the rest of this, we start to see him seeing more of the ghosts and a lot of different things. I'm trying not to give too much of it away, but yeah. So, 
After that one, she puts the second tip in and it starts off like a guy riding on his bike. It stops to talk to his missus on the phone and it sees like some guy dying. Pretty much it's a zombie film. Mm. I don't I don't really want to give too much away in here. Yeah, it's kind of hard because, to go through it without giving too much away. Uh, it's short little films. It, it, it's the anthology part mm. yeah, it. It just makes it even better. It doesn't make it boring. Like you get you, you get too, too much of the same story. But at least with this one, it does make you question a little bit of how a zombie works. Aye, uh, pretty much. So next we've got a news crew interviewing a cult in Japan. And it's getting off to like a weirdish start. Like they thought they had everything charged, and then everything started dying. So one of them goes back to get charge everything it. to charge it, and that the sirens go off. And you know what cult does? It's, it's chaos ensuing. It, it's, it's my favorite one for uh, it. Just makes the film. It's, Amazing. Um, the final one. This one's kind of stupid. Mm. Uh, it, it's aliens. Like I don't want to say anything else. The the last one's about aliens. It's just completely ridiculous. Yeah, it's the worst one. It's the one. worst one out of all the stories. But it doesn't take away from the rest of the film. Luckily, uh, luckily the rest of everything else that's happened on the film is incredible and then we see it going back into the main people and something strange happens i don't want to give it away but something strange happens but yeah those are top 10 for horrors uh a lot of these films are just incredible yeah. but yeah we hope you enjoyed this video i've done this with sophie but tell you what would you like to wrap up this video all right all right fair enough Alright, bye.